Hi, this is Rich with Rich Baum Photography, Sacramento, California. Welcome to Rich Baum's Tips and Tricks for Real Estate Photography YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed, please do so. Today's video is going to be about what we want to look for in photographing a home. And especially, it's almost like, what are we going to touch up in our model? Are we going to fluff pillows, arrange chairs, things like that? So I just want to go through a really nice house I'm shooting and uh, try and help you to understand, better understand the, the importance of attention to detail. And thanks Adorama for sponsoring my channel. If you're going to go shopping, please use that affiliate link. Helps me to make these free videos. Yes, free videos. Imagine that. And uh, again, subscribe to my channel and uh, sit back and enjoy this tutorial. Okay, we're here at a wonderful home I'm photographing. This is a new home build in Meadow Vista, California, right on a golf course. And uh, hey, $2.5 million, but uh, what do you want? You know, this is California. So um, first thing I'm going to do is walk in the house, and I'm going to uh, approach it and see what my options are. And uh, I'm going to pick out the pieces, the things that I want to photograph. And me personally, I always start right after getting in the door and I shoot progressively from the door on to all the areas of the home. That's just the way I do it because I find that saves a lot of time just going from one shot to another and covering areas. And we're also going to cover in the same direction, try and go life farming as uh, Wayne Capilli would say, or just move from one thing to another and try to incorporate the same angles, the same lighting in the same direction and try and cut up the shoot into areas that are easy to shoot and uh, that make sense time-wise and artistically too. So this is a rather big house and uh, actually it's not a super large house but it's got some big spaces. It's actually easier to photograph than you would think because I'm letting the ambient do the heavy lifting. As you can see, we've got beams up here and a lot of people see beams and go, oh, I'm gonna have a problem using flashes with beams. Well, you really don't have a problem because you mask in your ambient and you can find that in other videos that I do. But this is just to show you what we wanna, sh we wanna photograph. So we're gonna photograph this area, the kitchen, the dining area, and the multiple off rooms, as in the bedrooms and bathrooms and things like that. And uh, for this shot, we're gonna wanna just set up in this corner, relatively like what you're seeing, and get an overall shot. But we don't wanna go too wide. You don't want it to look stretched or super wide. In this shot, I used a 24 millimeter tilt shift, but you could easily use a 16 to 35 and put it at 16 or 18 millimeters, and it would be a really good rendition of what the actual space looks like, okay? So I certainly want to get a nice single point of this space right here because it's kind of uh, central to the room, really important for the feeling. And single points, which are basically straight on shots. It's not from the angle or the side, it's straight on. So you gotta remember, you gotta get not only your vertical straight, you gotta get your horizontal straight too. So you gotta get your camera lined up right down the middle and uh, perfectly level. And you gotta remember things like this. This video is about what are we doing here? Well, we're going to adjust the chairs so they look perfect uh, and symmetric in areas that we're shooting. And, and uh, oh my gosh, who left this AM PM cup of soda here? Oh, I'll have to drink it, I guess. Check your model, check your model's hair. Oh, look at this. This pillow was, had fallen down, so I'm gonna set this pillow up and I'm gonna make sure that this looks just like I want it. And this is here and maybe symmetric here. And I wanna make sure that these, uh, that's so funny. The, every stager has these green balls. I don't know what they are, but they just have them. So I'm gonna put these here and I'm gonna angle it to what I feel will most benefit the composition. I wanna make sure that these couches are relatively even. And I wanna make sure that I turn on the fireplace because what a great feature. What are we buying here? What are we selling? Well, a fireplace is a super important piece of this puzzle. And so we wanna get this side angle too, along with the single point because this shows this angle. 
And we certainly want to get the kitchen. I will usually do two or three shots of a kitchen. But for a house like this, especially a new build, I might get a couple of detail shots, vertical shots where we know we normally shoot horizontal for MLS, but vertical shots would work really well in this space because it's very valuable property here. It's not so much the property, what is inside the house, what are we selling, what are we trying to pitch? And those are the features. And a beautiful kitchen like this is certainly something we want to show off. And with the kitchen, you want to show off, if there's a really nice stove, you want to show it off. Like this beautiful Thermador um, stove, it costs a lot of money. You want to feature it, so you might want to take a vertical shot of it. And another thing you want to do is you want to definitely turn on the lights coming down. Or you might shoot with lights off, but me personally, I want to show that, okay? So you just want to make sure that you highlight the different features of the house. Also, there may be certain built-in um, drawers and things that you want to feature to just show them um, what they can get if they buy this property. But uh, boy, this is a nice stove. I wish I had it. And we definitely want to get this kitchen nook, this breakfast nook, uh, showing what people can expect if they buy this beautiful property. They can have a beautiful place to sit with their family, look out the window at the golfers on the golf course, we can build into them an expectation of what they can get if they buy this house. You know, people don't have vision. You've got to show them vision with your photographs. Make it enticing for them to go, I want to get this house because I can sit there and live like this. And here's a little tip. You may want to get little vignettes. So those are little shots of, um, look that up, vignette in, in Google. Google it because it's really important. And you may want to get little entrance areas, features that, that are, are a part of the home that will give you the feeling. You're not just documenting the rooms, you want to give the feeling of what you've got. So this area that leads us to this area, you want to, you want to capture it, because how nice is this? I mean, you got uh, fake bullhorns. I mean, come on, how great is that? And for this office, you could choose, if you just want to do one shot, and for this office, I think one shot's enough. But I certainly want to capture the windows because that's the selling point. You want to get an angle that shows a view or shows something other than a blank wall. And something that's really important, you want to make sure that the, uh, this desk chair is arranged properly. And you want to move the props to camera where it may look great in person, centered, but to camera, it may be better here. To camera, it might be better here. This might look better here or here and vice versa. If these books are over here, let me just put them over here. If these books are over here, it's not going to look as good because I think you want to have them over here. So I'm not saying you got to move everything in the room, but I would certainly say adjust it to camera. Uh, that will be something simple. And uh, little chairs like this you can move even a little bit might make it so much better. Now we're in one of the two master suites in this house. Most houses only have one master suite, but what do I do? I usually get three shots to a master. I'll get a master angle, which is showing you this. Uh, this is something that we all deal with. And I've got the view and I've got the chairs. Gives people the understanding, the feeling of what you can expect to live here and you see out the window again. You have such a beautiful opportunity here. But you wanna make sure that you move the chairs to camera and that's why I tether because I can sit there with my iPad and look at what I'm doing really helps me. So I'm gonna get this shot. I'm gonna get this shot. And I'm gonna get this shot. So I've got my three shots for the master and it's just what I do. What you do might vary. You might do one shot for a master, you might do two or three. This comes under the, uh, the category of make sure your clarification of expectations with your client or your realtor or owner is, is met. So make sure that you cover that. I've got a video for that. And here in the master bathroom, one of the two, and I'll show you the other one next, I'm gonna get two shots. And master bathrooms, I usually get two, possibly three, if they require more uh, detailed uh, explanation. If there's some features in it, 
like this next bathroom I'll show you, I would do three in to feature uh, different aspects. But this is a shower. I might do this shot. And maybe this shot, a, a reverse shot showing another feature or another angle. And with this other master bedroom, I uh, certainly want to get three shots of this one too, similar to the last room. And one thing I want to definitely feature is the fireplace because that is money right there. People love fireplaces, views, and um, just nice decor. Voila, got the fireplace and the window, two very valuable aspects of this space. And now I'm going to take you into the master bathroom, which is super, super important. And like the other bathroom, it's really important to get these features because such a nice bathroom deserves the time to uh, give it more than a normal bathroom. So I might do two or three shots for this master. And actually for this design shoot, this new home shoot, I probably did six or eight different angles and vignettes and uh, vertical shots, detail shots like that. But you want to feature the beautiful, um, you know, the staging is here and I might move it here, might move it here. I might even move it over here. You never know what is going to work. This I might want to center up, things like that. So I'm going to put it back here because designers like it left the way it, they put it there. That's another tip. Make sure you put things back as they are because those stagers and designers really make an effort to do it. And make sure that your client knows that you chose to move things because for the camera, you are the aficionado. You're the expert on what we're doing here. So you've got to convey that to people. Okay. But we also want to feature this beautiful bathtub and this beautiful shower. I mean, how great would it be to live in this house? And props. Props are super important if you're doing a beautiful home. Talk to the owner of the home and say, hey, do you have a bottle of champagne? We don't need to open it. Glasses, we don't need to pour it, but just have something here that you can show. And it gives the potential buyer, and you want to give this example to your client. You want to say, give the potential buyer the idea that they can sit in this tub. What a beautiful tub and they can just look out the window and uh, make bubbles and I won't go any further than that. But they also have this beautiful walk-in shower. So you have to figure out a way to shoot this, okay? And if you have reflections, you need to figure out where you can move your, um, your camera to miss the reflections. Or like in this shot, you may wanna turn off, you may wanna turn off the lights that are reflecting there. So these are a couple of little tips and make sure that you get little, little areas like this if they're, they're worthy of it. You know, I mean, most houses don't have little vignettes that you want to get or little detail shots, but be sure. And you might want to put the chair like this. You may want to move this here and move that there. Do it to camera again, why I tether? Because I can see where I move things to camera, but you can do it without tethering. Ancillary bedrooms or secondary bedrooms, I only do one shot in. I mean, I think you can get it in, in uh, one shot just like this. Every room, every house tends to have a room like this. If this is where you should save time and get good. It's a single speed light pointed up at the ceiling. Get it really quick, but make sure you check out uh, all the pillows. Make sure everything is right. A lot of agents and designers want to make sure that it looks perfect, neat, and also you may want to turn off or turn on the lights and you may want to angle them down. But a word of advice like that, a word of advice is you are at your own peril if you move something. So be really careful. You may not want to move something. I tend to live on the edge, move lights, and I don't want, like if it's pointing up at the camera, it's going to kind of overblow the shot. So I move it, but I wouldn't recommend it to everyone because you might break it. You never know. The same thing with drapes. You want to be really careful lowering and raising drapes as they may break. You never know. And bathrooms, we all love bathrooms. And this is a powder room. It's a little big for a powder room, but you know what? We gotta get toilets. You can't, no way, no way around it, but you don't need to feature the toilet. If you, can, if you can crop it out, great. You may wanna do a vertical, 
uh, for some powder rooms, some small rooms, but that's again, a clarification of expectations with your agent. Are they okay with vertical shots? Many agents only want horizontals. But for this, a single shot, it's an easy, a single ambient exposure, a single flash pop, and for the reflection in the mirror, I always use, almost always use, the ambient uh, reflection. So I can be in the picture with my flash and it's no big deal. As you can see right here, I can be in this shot right here, but I'm not gonna use that exposure. I'm gonna use the other exposure, the ambient exposure, to show uh, the uh, reverse reflection, okay? And as we were talking about vignette shots to give a feeling of the area, you may want to do something like this. I don't recommend you lay on the couch like this. I don't re recommend you sit on any of the furniture, but I'm having fun here. And you want to make sure you give the idea of the flow of the room and what people can expect if they buy this house. And again, with vignettes or little detail shots, you may want to focus on little areas of beautiful things that they have spent time designing. Um, you have a beautiful oven here. You want to make sure that you feature this because uh, this costs a lot of money. Um, these cabinets, beautiful woodworking here, beautiful cubbies. You can do, it's like a mudroom. Mudrooms are so great. Now, I wish when they staged it, they had put some uh, jackets and maybe uh, backpacks for the kids and boots on the ground. Those are always nice, but they didn't do this for this house. That's okay. It's still a pretty nice house. Laundry rooms like this or uh, rooms you can, uh, you know, just ancillary rooms, extra rooms. You want to make sure to get these features if they're worth it. And the greatest thing about this is many times you can get these shots with a single ambient exposure. Laundry rooms like the next room, I shoot usually single shot ambient and it always, almost always looks great. Who wouldn't want the, this house with these washer and dryer? I mean, how great is this room? So be sure to get a room like this. And again, I think you can get this in a single ambient exposure. Quick, easy, and these are where you save your time by getting your, the images, the number of count of images. If you shoot 25, 36, 50 shots, whatever you're shooting, you can add on these shots. And these are valuable shots too. Uh, people want to see what they can get. I mean, some people love laundry rooms. Garages. I mean, do you shoot garages? I don't normally shoot garages, but when you get a nice garage with either built-in cabinets, beautiful floor, or something like this, um, especially if you got your own golf cart in here, um, I would definitely say to shoot a garage. But again, you want to make sure your client is not expecting you to shoot a garage if you don't shoot it. So <laughs> you want to make sure that you're on the same program with them. Now, I'm not saying you need to have a 20 minute walkthrough on every house, but you'll learn that your agents, certain agents like certain things, certain agents don't. And the uh, expectations, uh, the clarification of expectation mm -hmm. to set yourself up for a lifetime working with this client. So you know, you go, you could say something like, I don't normally shoot garages unless they're really nice. Are you okay with that? Many times they'll go, yeah, don't shoot the garage, it's okay. And be sure if they've got a feature like a water feature, make sure that you get the, the homeowner, usually the homeowner or the, the agent, make sure they turn it on and make sure you feature this because this is money right here. Make sure you get these areas that are again in giving a potential buyer the vision of what they can expect if they spend $2.5 million on this home. And now your homes might vary. You might get uh, more for a home or less for a home, but that's what we're doing here um, in my area. And on the exteriors, be sure to spend your attention. Make, make sure that you take the time to arrange chairs like this. Make sure that they are even. Make sure, like if one chair is here and this is here, you're gonna, it ain't gonna look that good. So uh, I wanna make sure that everything is lined up and symmetric. I even moved this table when I shot it the other day that it would be even. And make sure that these little, little tchotchkes are all nice and as far. And make sure when you're shooting a fireplace, whether it's indoors, outdoors, do not turn it on without the owner or making sure it works. And also never put a fire in Photoshop 
if they, you know that the fire doesn't work. So when you get your client, uh, your agent or the homeowner, just mention, does the fireplace work? Because you wanna make sure if you put a fire in the fireplace, you wanna make sure it works. So people that are lo looking at the MLS listing can really see and know that this will be a working fireplace. And also this has um, a cover, uh, what is it, a, a mesh, protective thing. So me personally, I usually open this up so I can see the fire even better. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and have gained some, in, in, some insight into what I feature, um, what I try and convey, what, what are we selling? What are we doing here? It's super important. Um, you know, you've got to think about this. It's not, just not taking pictures of rooms. It's thinking about it. Now, I've shot thousands and thousands of houses, and this happens to be one of the nicer ones I normally shoot, I will be honest. But any house, you've got to take the time because even some small houses have a lot of valuable uh, angles and images and features that you will be able to point out to your clients and they're going to start to see that they want to hire you because you really know how to show off the best and the most important things in a home. And also remember, you can set yourself up for success and with the clarification of expectations with your client. That term is the most one of the most important terms in all of real estate photography. How to get your client to believe in you and how to get an understanding and have them have faith in you. They'll let you alone. They won't even be there. I'm alone in this house. They just trust me and, and that's because I built up this trust. So. Thank you so much for joining me, Rich with Rich Brown Photography, saying please subscribe. Check out Shooting Spaces, a real estate photography podcast at shootingspacespodcast.com. Or we have a lot of educational materials in my, my presets and, and everything at shootingspaces.net. And go check it out. And please use that affiliate link. Helps me make these free videos. Free videos. Woohoo! Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Please leave your comments. I try to answer them all. And I will see you on the next tutorial. Shoot better, shoot smarter. And you can start shooting beautiful homes like this because no matter where you live, somebody's building homes like this and you could shoot them. Okay? Bye.